He's Marler, and this is his music show. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another craptastic episode of the Marler Music Show. My name is David, also known as the Marler. Excuse me, I just my microphone here. I thought I had that done. Sorry. I'm in a little bit better position than last week. Um, before this episode, did listen to some crappy album before it that I was trying to review and, you know, figure out what the hell I was listening to. So this one's going to be, actually, it's another review, but nothing I've done before. It's going to be a concert review. So, um, yeah, it's been, um, been a long week, uh, mainly because I went to this show. Um, it was on a Sunday night here in Atlanta. Um, that next week was, next day was kind of tough, having to get home late, get up early, go to work, work all week. Anyway, but it was well worth it, well worth it. So, yeah, last Sunday night I went to see Dream Theater at the Fox Theater here in Atlanta. Um, first time I've seen them in probably about 15 years. Uh Third time overall, I think I saw them on the Octavarium tour in Chicago in 06 and then in 08 in Chicago again um, on Chaos in Motion tour. And so um, very, very, very good band live. Um, one that, you know, you're, you're going to get <clears throat> musically, they're pretty spot on from the way they sound on their record. Um, they're only, to me, the only weak spot they have live is James Fabry's voice. Um, can be very up and down and not really, you know, steady all the way through. But anyway, still, the, the, the musicianship in that band is almost unparalleled in my mind. To me, the only band that has musicianship that's, in my opinion, a little bit better is Tool. Um, but anyway, and so, yeah, went to saw them on this tour. Uh, it was called Dream Sonic. Um, it was a three-band um, bill with them, um, Devin Townsend, and you'll have to excuse me, the, the opening band escapes my mind right now. I can't remember who that was. Maybe it'll come to me later. But I, I didn't, I got there about halfway through the opening band. Heard a little bit of them. They were, they were pretty good. Devin Townsend was surprisingly good. Um, very entertaining. Um, and of course, Dream Theater came on. And so um, this tour is in support of their latest album, A View from the Top of the World, which I've listened to a few times. Um, I have to say that Dream Theater is a band that I started liking on a regular basis, probably mid 90s. Um, when they first came out, you know, their first exposure, mass exposure to everybody was when they put out their first album. And uh, released Pull Me Under, which I thought was a very, very good song. Um, a friend of mine let me borrow their that CD, and I liked it. I liked their next one, Awake. And, you know, I started getting into My musical tastes at that time were very weird, like... Um, I grew up listening to classic 70s, 80s rock, uh, 70s, 80s metal, hair metal. Um, when grunge came out, I got into a little bit of it, but like the bands I was listening to before all that, like a lot of them broke up. A lot of them weren't putting a lot of music out because it was so you know, grunge heavy on the national scene and, and, and it's what was everybody, everybody was listening to. And so a lot of them didn't have any traction anymore. So I was just finding different stuff and Dream Theater, you know, they, they caught my ear obviously because mainly because of John Petrucci and how great a guitar player he is. Um, but so I started getting into them a little more with each album and then I became a huge fan of them when they put out Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence. I just, I was like, okay, that's it, right? Um, and they put out several really good albums after that. Um, 
And then Portnoy left the band, and I think when he left, their songwriting took a hit a little bit, and their albums have just kind of been a little up and down. Um, and so I haven't really listened to them a lot on a regular basis since then, and especially stuff that was like after Portnoy's last album, which was Black Clouds and Silver Linings. Um, but um, I had a chance to see them a couple of years ago up in Memphis, and uh, we had tickets. Something happened where I couldn't, wasn't able to go. And excuse me for all the sniffing. I, my sinuses are <laughs> acting up with this great Georgia weather. Um, but I wasn't able to, to go to that. And so I saw a couple months ago where they were coming here, and I was like, um, I might might give it a shot. Anyway, went back and forth, and finally last week, and I bought tickets. And I had pretty good seat buying them so late. It wasn't it wasn't packed full. It was probably three quarters full. Um, so yeah, they you know they come on stage and like I said, it's in support of that new album. Um, they did three songs off of that album. Um, they only did ten songs total. Which Dream Theater is one of those bands you're not going to see them most nights play a twenty song set list because that would take like three hours. And there's only been like once I've seen them where they've played like two and a half hours. Um, they don't do a lot of the evening will stuff anymore, unfortunately, because I would love to see that again with them. Um, I think that's the best way to see them because they've got so much stuff, you know, in order to hear 15 to 20 songs, you've got to play a two, three hour set. Um, so anyway, they started off with the alien, which is off the new album, uh, went directly to sleeping giant also off the new album. Both of these songs are really good. The sleeping giants, probably my least favorite of the songs, probably they did all night. Um, the first song, the Alien's got a really good riff to it. Um, it's, to me, it's classic Petrucci, and the opening is, to me, classic Dream Theater. It's a really good song overall. Did that, Sleeping Giant, and then they went to their Awake album and then caught, and then caught, sorry, and did Caught in a Web, um, a song I'd never heard them do, a song, one of my favorite songs from them, actually. Um, it's one of those songs that really caught my ear in the early days with them. Um, they did that and it, it sounded fantastic. In fact, I posted two videos this week that I took at that concert, not very good quality. So I just put them up there for y'all to kind of look at and, you know, if you get bored and Hey, we have a, caught in the web was one of them. Uh, it was a fantastic song. I love that song a lot. Um, the next song they did was answering the call also off the new album. Um, here again, <clears throat> I think a very good song, especially the opening and, you know, the intermediate parts. Um, we got a lot of classic Dream Theater sound in there. Um, so that was a good. So your three of your first four songs were new, brand new. And now, so they, they finished that one. And then they do five, six, and seven are three songs off of Six Degrees of Inner Tur Turbulence, which, in my opinion, is their second best album. We'll get into that later. Um, so they go into that. They do three songs together that are together on the album that are very good. They flow very well and, and very beautiful. Uh, very beautiful piece when the three are put together, I believe. Uh, Solitary Shell, About to Crash, and Losing Time, Grand Finale. Um, you know, for those of you that know Dream Theater, that album is, you know, pretty much a concept thing, especially the, the second disc. And those three songs are three of the best on the album not the best but three of the best on the album and those three together flow together very well and i was very happy to hear them do that because here again i don't think i'd ever heard them do those any of those songs before so that was nice and refreshing um song number eight which was the second video i posted this week from that concert that i went to um is pull me under which pretty much Anybody that's ever heard the name Dream Theater knows this song, whether they know it's them or not. And most people that listen to rock and maybe metal, Pull Me Under got a, quite a bit of radio play in the early days of it. Um, it was an edited version, but it still got radio play. And so it's it's probably their biggest hit. Um, a song that, you know, if people do think of them, a lot of times, unfortunately, that's what they think of them for. And it's a great song, don't be wrong. But they've got so much stuff that's so much better and so much more diverse. And that doesn't at all tell the story of what band, what this band is. Um, so I'd never heard, heard them do that as well. And it was very, very nice to um, 
hear him do that. Um, check out the video. It's not a great video, but check it out and see what you think as a, you know, as a live song. And I think it's, it did, came off very well, which most of their stuff does because they're just so, they're so on it and good live. And, uh, you know, they're so tight. Uh, the next song was The Count of Tuscany, which is a uh, mere 20-minute, you know, radio-friendly song off of Black Clouds and Silver Linings. Um, it's a good song. I, it's not anywhere near one of my favorites from them. Uh, it was kind of cool to hear it. It does have a lot of cool parts and a lot of cool changes and a lot of cool interludes in it. Um, but it's... It's also, it's one of those things, you know, if they were doing that in an evening with set, it'd have been great. But they're doing it towards the end of an hour and a half set, um, which, you know, with a band like them, they've got seven, eight minute songs on average a lot of times. You know, I'd rather hear them do two or three, seven eight minute songs as opposed to one 20 minute song because they can get more songs in that hour and a half set you know and plus two you know they could have done anything off train of thought as i am this dying soul honor thy father in the sacrifice anything like that that's and i'm biased because that's my favorite album of all time from dream theater um i think it's their best and i think it's one of the best metal albums progressive or not um ever made so it would have been really nice to have seen them, you know, forego the 20 minute count of Tuscany and do three or four or probably only three, two or three of something else off another album, um, that, you know, obscure, a little more popular for the fans, whatever. Um, but then again, I heard dream theater fans, you know, there's a, they don't have to worry about what they're playing because they're diehard fans just love a lot of the stuff they do and they go re real deep into their catalog with it so it is what it is it came off fantastically it's a very good song um so you know bonus is it was a song i've never seen them do before so there you go and then they finished out the night with um off scenes from a memory uh the spirit carries on which um is it's kind of a strange closing song in a way not for them um, because they, you know, they they can kind of close or open with anything they want to. They're just, you know, they've got that kind of adjustability. But for me, a um, little bit of a slower song, maybe. They typically, I think the few times that I've seen them, they've finished with slower stuff. Um, but this song I, I saw them do, I think the first time I saw them, and it is a fantastic song. It's a very beautiful song. Great, beautiful solo by Petrucci. Um, quite honestly... I think it could be one of the most beautiful songs ever written, at least in the rock metal genre. Uh, it's a fantastic song. Uh, very, very good. They, they had um, members of Devin Townsend's band, and it was, I think the other band was Animals for Leaders. Their guitar player could come out um, um, to play with them on this. Uh, it was pretty cool to see all that. And it was a nice end of the show the crowd was into it and uh you know so overall it was you know went off very well as an ending song so yeah it was uh it was a very good show like i said musically they can still bring it um and from my memory just as well as they could you know 15 years ago last time i saw them um it's a little different without portnoy like i said i think his songwriting contributions to the band um, has made them suffer a little bit on their, you know, not having him there has made them suffer a little bit on what they've done since he left. But live, um, yeah, they're they're still really good, even without him, even without him. Mike Mangini um, does a very good job of playing Portnoy stuff. I would imagine he studied it very well. You know, Portnoy has always done a lot of improv stuff during drum fills and everything, and. Um, Mike Mangini has done a good job of, of you know, I'm sure he studied the, for a long time the studio tracks, the live versions, just to see, you know, what he needed to do to, to make it come off live. He does a very good job. They couldn't have found him. I don't know if I can replace Portnoy, but they couldn't have found anybody better to step in his shoes, I don't feel like. So, uh, very good. So, yeah, it was a great night. Um, 
I'm, I'm glad I went. I think had I not gone, I might have regretted it later on because who knows if I ever get a chance to see them again. Um, you know, they're one of those bands been around for over 30 years. Um, they're probably getting a little towards the twilight of their career. Um, James LeBree is a few years older than everybody else. And so it's one of those things where, you know, who knows how his voice is going to react or what it's going to do over the next five plus years. And so maybe a situation where they might have to give it up, you know, because of him or whatever. I hope not. Uh, hopefully when they are able to give it up, they can do it on their own terms and just like say, we're just going to stop. Um, but we'll see what happens with that. So anyway, I just wanted to give y'all my review, my review of that show from the other night. Um, hope you hope you've enjoyed this. Um, as boring as it may be, as boring as I might be, and as definitely as ugly as I am, there's not much that you can do with this face. But uh, although I, I do need to shave, and that's gonna that's gonna happen the next day or so. So next time you see me, I will have a cleaner face. I promise. So anyway, um, next episode, I'm still kind of thinking about it. It could be another concert review from a few concerts I've been to the past year or so. It could be another new album review. Or I'm thinking about possibly reviewing the new Godsmack, new Metallica. Um, maybe the new Alter Bridge. I don't know. I haven't decided about that one yet. <clears throat> Excuse me, but we'll see. Um, so, but if you've got any feedback, any comments, uh, that you would like, uh, to, for me to answer to before, or you got anything that you would like to see me do, just, uh, enter it in the comments down below. I'll respond as quick as I can. Or you can email me at the Marlboro Music Show at gmail.com. I'll respond there as well. Um, so I've taken up enough of y'all's guys' time. Once again, uh, I'm going to sign off. And as always, like I always say, be good to each other, be good to yourself, and life will be good to you. Peace. <laughs>